This video is sponsored by GE Profile. For a long part of history, humans have been using smoke to preserve, and of course, impart flavor into meat and other foods. But how did smoking food even start? How does smoking food scientifically work? And how has it evolved? Now, it's believed that smoking food started in the Paleolithic era, roughly between 3 million years ago and 1200 BC, when prehistoric humans were beginning to use tools, and importantly, when they began controlled use of fire. Basically, shortly after we learned to harness the fire, we figured out how to smoke food with it. Now, originally, smoking was used simply to preserve the food, as early humans realized that hanging meat over a fire dried it and allowed it to last a lot longer to help preserve food supplies during times of drought or cold winter months, for example. It's supposed that they had small rooms with a fire in it and no chimney, and and when they hung meat out of the way of pests off the ground in that room, they eventually noticed that the meat had a different flavor and it lasted longer. Now over time, larger communities would even create smoke houses to smoke large amounts of food that were constructed of a structure with a chimney and an inner chamber to generate smoke from a fire and control the level of smoke over longer periods of time. And again, while all of this was originally done in the name of preservation of food for winter or long voyages, newer methods of preservation allowed it to be used less and less for that and more and more for the other big benefit of smoking, flavor. Now there are a few scientific processes that are responsible for both of these benefits, and there's also two different types of smoking. We have cold smoking, which is generally used more for preservation or imparting some flavor to already cooked items, or even cheese, without cooking or melting them, with the temperature being below 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, and this would take multiple days sometimes to fully smoke the food. And then we have hot smoking, which is usually done between 190 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 71 and 149 degrees Celsius, and and actually cooks the food during the smoking process over a few hours to a day usually. These methods both help with the preservation of food in a few ways. Firstly, the heat itself kills microbes on the surface of the food. In cold smoking, salt is usually needed to be added in order to do that instead because of the lower temperature. Now, salting, which is usually done in both hot and cold smoking, also kills bacteria as well as draws moisture out to further reduce the chance for bacteria to be able to survive on and inside the food. And then the smoke itself, which actually contains various chemicals that act as preservatives. Some of these chemicals are phenols, aldehydes, ketones, and acids, which have antimicrobial, antioxidant, and of course, flavoring properties, and create a barrier on the surface of the food that stops microbes from spoiling it. Now, these same compounds that help with the preservation of the food aren't terribly pleasant to inhale. So most of the time, this would have been done in a room with no humans allowed inside, or even nowadays more likely outside. Thanks to technology advancements though, this GE Profile Smart Indoor Smoker, which GE Profile sent to me to help me make this video with, is the first indoor smoker with active smoke filtration, which takes real wood smoke and catalyzes it into warm air inside the machine. You even can push this button here to clear the smoke whenever you need to open it so that the smoke doesn't get into your house when rotating the meat, for example. We'll talk more about the advancements smoking food has undergone in a sec though, but first, let's talk again about some of the science of how hot smoking changes a lot of the things in the food itself, which all add to the flavor. Now, generally, you want to smoke foods with more connective tissues, as these contain collagen. This is why you see high collagen items like ribs, brisket, bacon, etc., as go-tos for smoking and barbecue, in addition to poultry and other meats. Now, Collagen, when cooked quickly, contracts and actually gets tough, which is why you don't like it when the steak you had grilled has it in it. But when it is cooked slowly over a longer period of time at a lower temperature, it instead melts and actually creates gelatin, which ends up making the meat more flavorful, tender, etc. Then something similar actually also happens with the triglycerides in the meat, aka the saturated fatty acids or the fat found in your meat. When cooked low and slow, as they say, these fats melt in a process called rendering, and again, add flavor and tenderness throughout the meat. Now that's what the slower cooking and the lower temperature do to enhance the flavor of the food, but the smoke itself has an effect too. Most hardwoods contain cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin in various ratios depending on the type of hardwood. Now softwoods like pines and firs also have a high resin content, which when burned produces a harsh tasting soot, which is why you see hardwoods used for smoking and not softwoods. When you burn hardwood at lower temperatures, it breaks down the cellulose and hemicellulose, which are 
are sugar molecules, and that then caramelizes on the food, adding sweet, floury sometimes, and even fruity-like flavors. Lignin in the wood turns into a few components, like guayacol, phenol, and syringol, mostly, which all add spicy and smoky flavors. Another feature this GE Profile Smart Indoor Smoker has that's clever and helps is that it has an independent heat source for the burning of the wood pellets for the smoke, and another to actually cook the food. And both can be controlled precisely to adjust smoke levels and temperature separately. So, you can adjust the level of smoke being put in contact with the food and change how much of those compounds are introduced. Thus controlling the level of those flavors to whatever level you want. And finally, there is just something in our DNA maybe that seems to enjoy the smell of smoked food that maybe is connected to that long history that humans have with it. Now, speaking of that history, we have come a long way in the technology used for smoking food. I mean, we went from smoking the food in huts to community smokehouses to all sorts of individual or restaurant smokers. But now, thanks to technology, we even have some amazing electric ones that can even work on a countertop in a small New York City apartment like mine, like this GE Profile Smart Indoor Smoker. And frankly, something that I think is super important about it, besides all the features and the things that can do is that it actually lowers the barrier of entry to smoking food for people like myself who aren't necessarily barbecue pit masters. Smoking food has become an art if we're honest, but even I, who has very little experience smoking food, can make great food because of the preset food settings for brisket, pork ribs, pork butt, chicken wings, and breast, and salmon on this machine. I can set it to these and easily follow one of the included recipes, even with the included temperature probe to have it stop when it reaches the desired internal temperature, from a proper chef named Dallas McGarity, who I had the pleasure of meeting in person at CES, the Consumer Electronics Show this year, where this indoor smoker took home a ton of awards at, by the way, and eat more of his delicious barbecue that he made in the smoker there. I actually managed to make the best wings that I've ever made, honestly, following his recipe using the indoor smoker with my dad the other night. We actually made a buffalo sauce that night and ended up eating more than half the wings dry. They were that good. And the brisket option was a huge hit over New Year's Eve with a bunch of friends while we counted down to midnight for, admittedly, more than one U.S. continental time zone. Now, in addition to being smart in the recipe control type of way, it's also smart in that it can precisely control the wood pellet temperature to optimize the release of those aromatic components that we want and actually allows you to get the same level of smoke flavor from less wood pellets than what's used in outdoor smokers, which means less cost and also less waste. Overall, it's fascinating and amazing to me to see how we've gone from literal cave people smoking food for survival to me now being able to casually just smoke brisket in my tiny New York City apartment. There you go. I hope you enjoyed learning about smoking food, its history, the science behind it, and how GE Profile is using their tech to make it even more accessible. You can check out their smoker at the link below, and there's even a huge discount coupon for a limited time that they provided that I'll leave down there as well. But thanks for watching this decoder episode, and um, I'm gonna go make some more wings. Good night. And Lingen, Lig, Lig, damn. Lignin in the word, hemi, 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 hemi like a bad ram. Let's go with that. And the hemi sell me on the look. Working with smoke. Ooh, I'm gonna smell good after this video. But how did smoking food even start? <laughs> Smoke's blowing that way the entire time. As soon as I lean into the fire to record.